Hi guys, this is Linda and welcome back to my kitchen. Today we're going to make another pound cake. I told y'all I had a lot of recipes. This is not an ordinary pound cake. This pound cake is from the 1920s and it is from the Ritz Carlton Tea Room in New York City. And in the bowl already I've got sugar, butter, and shortening. The measurements and the whole recipe will be down below. I'm going to get these mixed up till they're fluffy and then I'll bring you back. Alright, I've got this all mixed up. Now, the next thing that's going in um, is five eggs and you add them one at a time. I'm going to turn this up a hair. When one gets beaten in there, you add the next one. Now remember what I told you, when you're making a pound cake, everything has to be room temperature. Uh-oh, two slipped in. But I'll bring you back when I get through with the eggs. Alright, the next thing that's going in is this flour, and, it, and it's sifted. And in, also in here is salt and baking powder. And it's going to alternate with one cup of whole milk. You're going to begin and end with the flour. Always manage to make a mess. I'm gonna turn that up a little bit. And remember, I don't I remember always use large eggs when you're baking anything. Large or extra large. Don't use medium, don't use small. goes the other half of the milk. The last of the flour going in. I'm going to cut it down a little bit till it kind of, that's all of it. Yep. Now, oh. Uh, going to stop it a minute and scrape down the sides because I did not use the flex blade. 
I don't like to use it when I don't know how heavy the batter is going to be. So we're just going to scrape this down. This is uh, not just a, there's no flavorings, extracts going in this. This is a lemon pound cake. Preheat your oven, if I didn't tell you, to 350 degrees. And this cake is going in the center of the oven. Now, this is fresh lemon juice, and it's six tablespoons. Now remember, four tablespoons is a quarter of a cup. So squeeze out a quarter of a cup and then do another half. And this is the zest of one lemon or maybe a, it took me two lemons to get six tablespoons and I don't know if you saw this video but I always freeze my lemons wash them and then freeze them and then you know they're always good and what you need to do when you get ready to thaw them is just put them in the microwave and don't take them out when they're still a little cold. You want that lemon warm all the way through and it's going to provide you a whole lot of juice. A whole lot of juice. And I am... I'm shutting this off and I bought this new Nordic bunt pan. I'm so excited about it. <laughs> it's one of those swirl bunt pans. Can you all see? It's one of the, it won't go any, anyway you can see the inside of it. And I greased and floured it and I hope I greased and floured it enough. But I've not used this pan, and I hope it works out for this <clears throat> pound cake. Um, and the directions for this pound cake, I'm not certain. It says bake 55 minutes. But it also states that you can bake two loaf pans or one bunt can pan full. So I chose to use the bunt pan. And I'm not sure if the timing will be the same, but we'll find out. I'll keep an eye on it and keep it tested. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and pour it in the, in the bunt pan. I don't think you need to watch me do that. So uh, I'll bring you back when I get it out of the oven. Be sure and tap it a couple of times to get some of the air bubbles out of it. And we'll be back. Alright guys, we're back. This is the cake. These are very delicate. The cake came out of the pan beautifully. But that rack, the rack I put it on to cool, was just not right for this cake because at, well first of all I have to tell you that I that I overfilled my pan when you get about an inch and a half from the top of the pan when you put putting your batter in don't fill it anymore find another little container to put the extra batter in because this overflowed and I had a feeling that it would so um, I had the presence of mind to put a, um, um, 
pan under it. A baking pan. So, that caught a whole lot of batter. But anyway, it took this full... I, I guess the directions must be for two loaf pans because it took this 65 minutes to bake. And, um, and I tested it. I tested it at 55, I, t I tested it at 50, 55, 60, 65, and that's what it took. So we're going to cut it now and get Sam a little piece, and um, and he's going to tell us. I had never seen a cake, you know, with all those spirals there. Uh, well, that's the pan that I put it in. Yeah, that's, that's neat. It is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know I love pound cake. I know you do. This is... I got my coffee right here. Good. This is a lemon pound cake. You know what's worse than... Well, that doesn't even look well, like a big pea. Oh, it's moist. Yeah, well, that's good. You know what's worse than biting down on an apple and finding a worm in it? No. Biting down on one and finding a half a worm. That's pretty bad. Well, guys, this is that cake. It's got a lot of crunch to it. It's very moist inside. And uh, it's vintage recipe from the 1920s. So let's see what Sam thinks. Oh, I didn't give you a four. Let me have a four. Well, it's certainly different looking than any pound cake on the outside, but in, but you're right. It, mm, very good. Lighter than most pound cakes. You can taste the lemon, lemon zest. Just a very slight lemon taste. Very light lemon taste. Mm -hmm. Not overpowering. Mm -hmm. Very good. And got the crunchiness on the outside. I like that. Well, is it dry or? No, it's very moist. It's fine. Good. Very good. Yeah. Glad to hear it. Yeah. All right, guys. You heard it from the my master tester. Give this cake a try. I haven't tried it. But, you know, I do trust Sam's opinion. And um, get back with me and let me know. You know, it isn't often that you find vintage recipes from a, you know, a famous hotel. So give it a try. Thank you for spending part of your day with me. I appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up. And please subscribe if you haven't. Until next time, you take care.